Okay, this is the video for Lab 5, Limiting Reagent. Um, you're going to hear the term reagent and reactant interchangeably in uh, this lab. Reactant just means the chemical that, or a chemical that is reacting. Reagent just means um, a chemical in general. So regardless of which term we're using, we're still talking about the same thing. Now for this lab, you need to understand the concepts of limiting reactant versus excess reactant, as well as our theoretical yield. Now in general, for chemistry, we're not going to mix exactly the things that we need together. One, it just takes a lot of time, and two, there are benefits to having one reagent in excess that we will talk about in 112. Um, it asks you to kind of think through what some of those are uh, in your pre-lab, and for the most part, any acceptable answer uh, works. But it's just something for you guys to consider, um, and there is always your textbook and other resources to help you answer that. Now, the limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out. It is the one that limits the amount of product um, that you can make. So it really limits how much of your yield or how much of something you can you can get from the reaction. Um, your excess reactant is going to be left over when the reaction stops. You can only have a reaction continue as long as you have both of your reactants present. As soon as you run out of one, you can't do anymore. It's like uh, in your pre-lab, they use the example of ham sandwiches. When you run out of ham, you can't make any more ham sandwiches. And so that's kind of the uh, the idea here. Now, the examples in your pre-lab uh, or in your introduction section really are pretty comprehensive. But I want to go through the exact reaction you guys are going to be doing. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, all of these terms um, related to the exact reaction you're going to be working on. Now for you guys, the reaction that we're going to be dealing with has to do with, um, there it is, uh, copper 2 chloride dihydrate and aluminum metal. And so we give you the balanced equation in your pre-lab. And that is um, kind of nice because most of you haven't dealt with hydrates before. But for you guys, the reaction is 2Al reacts with 3 copper 2 chloride dihydrates. And that's going to produce 3 Cu solids plus 2 aluminum chlorides. Hmm, I should have written, written smaller. Let's start that over again. Okay, we're going to have two aluminums reacting with three copper two chloride dihydrates. And that's going to react to produce um, three copper solids plus two aluminum chlorides plus six waters. And I'm going to leave off my subscripts here, not because um, they don't aren't important, but more because um, of room issues here. Now, what's great is you guys are going to have two beakers. So you're going to have beaker A and beaker B. Now, in beaker A, you're going to pit a certain amount of aluminum and a certain amount of copper 2 chloride dihydrate. In beaker 2, you put a different amount of aluminum and a different amount of copper 2 chloride dihydrate. Then you come in and you add some water and you watch the reaction happen. Now, copper 2 chloride is blue. Aluminum chloride is colorless. And so you're going to watch it turn from this nice, pretty, clear blue solution to some of that blue being used up as you go forward in the reaction. And you'll be able to tell that the reaction is done based off, is the color still changing? Um, is there still bubbling? That sort of thing. Now, after you've added your water, and it's relatively a small amount, you're going to mix, I think, like 50 mils in there. Um, you stir it around and you wait. It takes about 30 minutes just to make sure everything is done. Um, and you're doing this in 
uh, at least this portion is okay, but you need to do this in the hood. Um, at the end of this reaction, you're going to have solid copper in your beaker. And solid copper, just like pennies, is going to settle to the bottom of the beaker. Um, and the idea is uh, you should have solid copper and you shouldn't see anything else present. Um, if you see some uh, blue color or aluminum, um, what you're going to do, um, no, go away. If you see some excess aluminum, what you're going to do is you're going to add some 6 molar HCl. You'll add 1 mil and you'll wait. And if you still have some there in 5 minutes or so, you add another mil and you wait. And you continue doing that until it's gone. Don't add more than 5 milliliters. If you add more than 5 milliliters, it is going to take you forever in the next few steps. Um, so just up to 5 times you can add 1 mil. Now the other great thing is you are going to be doing both beakers at the same time. So you're going to measure out the aluminum copper 2 chloride for beaker A. You're going to measure out the aluminum for and copper 2 chloride for beaker B. You're going to add it and you're going to be doing this at the same time so that you can finish the lab within an hour and a half, two hours, and you have some time left over for those calculations. Now, once you've added the HCl, if you've needed to, um, you can then uh, decant, which means if you have a beaker and you've got some solid pieces down here and some solution here, you're going to pour so that the liquid comes off and the solid stays. Kind of like if you have a pan of pasta and you want to pour off the water and leave the, the pasta and maybe you don't have a strainer handy. That same concept here. So you're going to decant the liquid and you're going to be left with a beaker with just some solid pieces and maybe a tiny bit of liquid in the bottom. Um, at that point, you're going to wash the copper with some more water. So you're going to add some water, swish it around, uh, rinse and decant it again. Um, you will need to rinse this twice. The idea here is you're trying to get rid of that acid. Um, so if you rinse it twice with water and decant, you're going to be left with just wet copper at the bottom. Now, um, wet copper is great, but you can't measure that copper um, if it's got water mass there too because it's not going to give you an accurate measurement. So what we do is we are going to rinse that copper with methanol. Um, the reason we're doing that, methanol has no purpose in the reaction whatsoever. What it does is methanol is miscible with water. And so it's going to take this water and when we decant that methanol, the water goes with it and you're going to be left with something that will evaporate very quickly. If you ever spilled um, rubbing alcohol or acetone, generally you can watch those liquids evaporate very, very fast. It's the same concept here, it's just methanol is even quicker. So you're going to decant that methanol and you're going to heat and you're going to be left with this copper solid. Now technically you made some water, you made some aqueous um, aluminum chloride, but the reason we're going to be talking about copper is it's the solid that's left in that beaker. And so for us, in the lab that we have, that is the easiest one for you guys to measure. And so when we're talking about our product, all of our measurements are going to be done with copper um, solid just because of that. So let's go through a sample calculation. Now I don't want to do your math for you. And so instead of doing the exact measurements that you guys are going to be doing, let's change my pen color. We're going to do something different. So what I want to do is add in um, where to go? 0 0.20 grams of aluminum and 0 0.40 grams of copper 2 chloride dihydrate. Now, what we want to do is find out, just like in your post lab or in your data section, um, in your data section you have this area where you have the grams. We ask you for uh, the molar mass 
and the moles of each of these, and you're going to be finding your theoretical yield. So just like in your pre-lab, we're going to do this. I just want to make sure you guys have this information here. Now, hopefully, um, you have your periodic table present because we're going to quickly find our molar masses here. Copper is on the periodic table. So the molar mass of copper um, is 63.55 grams per mole. For aluminum, it's 26.98 grams per mole. Now for the copper 2 chloride dihydrate, atom, number, mass, and total. In this compound, we have copper, chlorine, hydrogen, and oxygen. You have to include those waters as part of the molar mass because what this really means is the waters are surrounding that salt and um, you can't separate them at this point. So we're going to have one copper, two chlorines, two times two is four hydrogens, and two oxygens. Molar mass of this is 63.55. Molar mass of this guy is 35.45. This is 1.01, .01, and this is 16.00. Um, so overall, we have 63.55, uh, 70.90, 4.04 .04 and 32. So in your calculator you can add all of these together and you should get oops wrong thing 63.55 plus 70.90 plus 4.04 .04 plus 32 should give you something like 170.49 grams per mole. So I'm just going to write that up here. Now, I'm just pitting that there so that we can um, talk about uh, this in a second as we do our math. So in my beaker, we've added uh, 0 0.20 grams of aluminum solid, and we're going to add 0 0.40, let me add that decimal place back, um, of the copper 2 chloride dihydrate. What we need to do is we are going to find the theoretical yield based off the amount that we've added. Now, in order to find the theoretical yield, we have to find out how much copper we could make if we used all of the aluminum, and that was limiting. Then we're going to do the exact same calculation, um, assuming that copper 2 chloride dihydrate is limiting, and we're going to see how much copper solid that would allow us to make. Now, the limiting reactant will be the one that has a smaller yield, and so that is going to be our theoretical yield, whichever number is smaller. Now, you're going to measure grams of your reactant on the scale, and we're looking for how many grams of product we can make. Now, in order to go from grams to grams, we always convert to moles. The way that we do that is with our molar mass. So we have our molar masses up here of our two reactants, so we're okay. Then we can convert to moles of product using our balanced equation, which you are given, because this has our coefficients here. And then we can get back to grams using the molar mass of our product, which again we have. So this is a three-step process, just like what you're doing in lab, uh, excuse me, in lecture. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room there. Now, let's first do it with aluminum. If this 0 0.20 grams of aluminum is limiting, so we're going to convert to moles because we know every time we have 26.98 grams of aluminum, we have one mole of aluminum. According to our balanced equation, Every time we react two moles of aluminum, we're going to produce three moles of copper. That's, again, the coefficients. Now, if we produce one mole of copper solid, that's going to give us 63.55 grams. Okay? Now, if we plug this into our calculator, 0. Oops. 
clear, 0 0.20 times 3 times 63.55 divided by 2 and div oops, divided by 26.98 you're going to get something like 0 0.70, 6, zero, we'll go with 707. Seven. Even though we really need two sig figs, it should be 0 0.71 grams of Cu solid that we would produce. And that is if all of our aluminum were to be used. Now, we don't yet know if aluminum is our limiting reactant. And so because of that, we have to do this whole system again just to make sure um, that's the case. So if aluminum was limiting, this would be the amount of copper we would make. Now let's do it with our copper 2 chloride dihydrate. For this, if we started with 0 0.40 grams copper 2 chloride dihydrate, we know Every time we have 170.49 grams of that guy, we've used or reacted one mole. According to our equation, if we react three moles of this, we are going to produce three moles of copper. And producing one mole of copper is going to give us 63.55 grams of copper. Oops. So if we plug this into our calculator, now we have 0 0.4 times 1 times 3 times 63.55 divided by 3 and divided by 170.49. And here we get 0 0.149 and some change grams of copper. Two sig figs, five sig figs exact, four, so we really only need two, so it's going to be about 0 0.15 grams of copper. And that's how much copper solid we could make if we used all of the copper 2 chloride. Now, of the two, it doesn't matter that we have enough aluminum to make 0.7 grams. We only have enough copper to make 0.15 grams. So this is our theoretical yield. And copper 2 chloride is our limiting reactant. Ah, there we go. I don't know what button I keep hitting, but there we go. Now, that gives us the idea uh, behind this lab, okay? Now, you could work backwards <clears throat> to see how much aluminum you had in excess by starting with this theoretical yield and working backwards to find out how much aluminum you used. If you know you started with 0.2, you find out how much you used, you could just subtract to find out how much aluminum is there. But the idea here, guys, is we now know our theoretical yield. So in your beaker, after you have reacted the copper 2 chloride and the aluminum in water, you've decanted, you've rinsed with water, you've decanted, you've rinsed with water, you've decanted, you, you um, add some methanol and you rinse, you're going to then have in your beaker um, this copper solid. And hopefully when you go to measure that on the scale, you'll have the beaker's mass plus roughly this. Now, to be entirely honest, that almost never happens. Instead, you're going to have some percent. And the percent yield is going to be... Um, what you actually make, or what you make in the experiment, over what you should have made, theoretically, times 100. So say in lab, you measure out 0 0.12 grams of copper solid. Well, we know theoretically we should have had 0.15. So we're going to plug in the 0 0.12 grams that you actually made over the 0 0.15 grams of copper that you should have made times 100. And it's going to give you a nice um, estimate of your efficiency here. 
and here you have a nice 80% yield. Um, now guys, don't get bogged down by what this number is. Um, if you have 100% or more, it does not mean that you did not have errors. You still had errors because we're dealing with very basic glass or very basic techniques here. Um, if you have a very low percent yield, doesn't mean that you did anything really wrong. The big picture is to be able to account for what your errors are doing and how that is going to affect your yield. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a good estimate of what this lab is going to look like.